Hi everyone, I'm Fatima and I'm going to present our work Privacy Preserving Domain Adaptation of Semantic Parsers. This was a work done during a summer internship at Semantic Machines. First, I'm going to talk about our problem setup. Um, so we're looking into improving the performance of task-oriented dialogue systems. However, the problem is that these models normally work with personal or confidential data. Um, for example, the users are interacting with our chatbot and they're asking, oh, could you tell me what the weather is going to be like in New York today? or you know, email everyone who's declined my invitation. And this data is private, so practitioners are not allowed to look at it. Um, what this means is that it's gonna be hard for us to know where the system is failing, um, whether it needs new um, training data in order to improve its linguistic coverage, or uh, if we want to add new functionality to it, and there's something that the users want that you're not providing. For example, um, we might think that, okay, if we fine tune privately on some of the user data, then we can actually get better models. Um, this is not going to help if the users are actually asking for functionality that doesn't exist. So if the users are asking the model to jump up and down, fine tuning is not going to make it grow legs. So what we need to do is to be able to look at some synthesized proxy data, um, which um, simulates the user data. For example, what is the weather in Seattle today? Have it annotated, add functionalities, and then add this annotated data back to the training data of the parser and improve its performance. So the question that we answer is how can we privately synthesize data that is distributionally close to the eyes of user data and can be used to improve the parser in this way. Uh, I'm going to quickly go over some background because the method that we use to provide um, privacy relies on differential privacy. Uh, DP is a guarantee that protects the membership of every single sample in the training data. So if you have two models trained on um, training data that differs by only one record, um, if you're doing it with differential privacy in mind, uh, the two models are supposed to be very close to each other. And we use DPSGD to do that. DPSGD is a differentially private variant of SGD, and what it basically entails is you clip your gradients during training and add noise to them. Now, um, the intuitive approach here, the intuitive baseline, is we want to generate um, training utterances um, that are uh, generate utterances that are similar to private utterances. So we could model p of x where x is private utterances. So we would take the user data, we will take the utterances, and we would train um, a generative model like in an autoregressive way using differential privacy. However, we want to get as distributionally close to the private utterances as we can. So what we do is we propose uh, modeling the parse trees as intermediate variables. So what this looks like is we model p of x given y, where y is an approximate private parse tree, uh, which could be um, achieved using uh, an imperfect parser. So we have one stage uh, that models the parse trees, p of y, and then we have another stage that models the utterances given the parse trees. Um, we train both of these stage models um, separately and we train them with differential privacy. And then in order to have the synthesized data set, what we do is we first sample a parse tree from the parse generation model and then conditionally sample um, an utterance from the parse to utterance model. Now, does this really work? In order to test this, um, what we do is we simulate a setup where we're trying to add um, a new functionality, like any weather related functionality that does not exist uh, within the existing semantic par uh, parser that we have. So how we do this is uh, we take one tenth of the SM Calflow data set, uh, we train a lower source semantic parser on it, and we exclude all the turns of the conversation that use weather related functions. Then we use the remaining nine tenths of the data as private user utterances that do include weather um, functions, and we have this annotated with the low resource parser, so with the imperfect parser. We apply both uh, the baseline methods and our proposed method um, on this in order to create synthesized data sets. We annotate the synthesized data sets um, and add weather related functions um, using a high resource parser. And then we, re uh, we retrained um, the low resource parser um, with this newly annotated data, which has the weather um, capability added to it. Now here we see the results for this experiment. Um, we can see that uh, in terms of the API recall and the actual graph match on weather related queries, you're seeing improvements. Um, well, it's um, the, uh, the actual like graph match is zero if you're not augmenting your data. Uh, however, uh, if we use our method or the baseline, we see improvement and we can also see that our method uh, provides a uh, much stronger improvement over, um, over the baseline. Um, so we can actually use the synthesized data set, whether from the baseline or from our method, uh, in order to add new functionality and we show that it's distributionally better to use the proposed two-stage method. So we have a lot of other experiments in the paper. I'll just list them and you can check out the paper for more details. 
But look at the effect that the number of modes in the data has in terms of the amount of improvement you get using the two-stage model. We look at the, uh, what happens if you disrupt the correlation between the parse trees and utterances by shuffling the data. We experiment with larger models such as GPT-2 large. Um, we study the effect that different DP hyperparameters have on the trade-offs that you get with utility and privacy. And also we look at an ad additional baseline where you have one stages and you when you have the one stage training and you use um, some domain data as prompts. So to conclude um, and summarize, we propose methods for privately synthesizing data that can be studied and annotated to improve the performance of semantic parsers. Some future directions um, could be to incorporate active learning in, or in, a, in order to have a more targeted improvement and also modify the objective to directly evaluate the marginal distributions as opposed to um, doing this latent variable modeling that we do. Thanks for listening to the talk.